Welcome to Channel 17, the Town of Colony Government Channel. And this book is Guess How Much I Love You by Sam McBratney. Little Nut Brown Hare, who was going to bed, held on tight to Big Nut Brown Hare's very long ears. He wanted to be sure that Big Nut Brown Hare was listening. Guess how much I love you, he said. Oh, I don't think I could guess that, said Big Nut Brown Hare. This much, said Little Nut Brown Hare, stretching out his arms as wide as they could go. Big Nut Brown Hair had even longer arms, but I love you this much, he said. Hmm, that is a lot, thought Little Nut Brown Hair. I love you as high as I can reach, said Little Nut Brown Hair. I love you as high as I can reach, said Big Nut Brown Hair. That is very high thought Little Nut Brown Hair. I wish I had arms like that. Then Little Nut Brown Hair had a good idea. He tumbled upside down and he reached up the tree trunk with his feet. I love you all the way up to my toes, he said. And I love you all the way up to your toes, said Big Nut Brown Hair, swinging him up over his head. I love you as high as I can hop, laughed Little Nut Brown Hair, bouncing up and down. But I love you as high as I can hop, smiled Big Nut Brown Hair, and he hopped so high that his ears touched the branches above. That's good hopping, thought Little Nut Brown Hair. I wish I could hop like that. I love you all the way down the lane as far as the river, cried Little Nut Brown Hair. I love you across the river and over the hills, said Big Nut Brown Hair. That's very far, thought Little Nut Brown Hair. He was almost too sleepy to think anymore. Then he looked beyond the thorn bushes out to the big dark world. Nothing could be further than the sky. I love you right up to the moon, he said, and closed his eyes. Oh, that's far, said Little Nut Brown Hair. That's very, very far. Big Nut Brown Hair settled Little Nut Brown Hair into his bed of leaves. He leaned over and he kissed him good night. Then he lay down close by and whispered with a smile, I love you right up to the moon and back. And that's the end of that story. <music> Stella Luna by Janelle Cannon. In a warm and sultry forest far, far away, there once lived a mother fruit bat and her new baby. Oh, how mother bat loved her soft, tiny baby. I'll name you Stella Luna, she crooned. Each night, mother bat would carry Stella Luna clutched to her breast as she flew out to search for food. One night, as mother bat followed the heavy scent of ripe fruit, an owl spied her. On silent wings, the powerful bird swooped down upon the bats. Dodging and shrieking, Mother Bat tried to escape, but the owl struck again and again, knocking Stella Luna into the air. Her baby wings were as limp and useless as wet paper. Down, down she went, faster and faster, into the forest below.
The dark, leafy tangle of branches caught Stella Luna as she fell. One twig was small enough for Stella Luna's tiny feet. Wrapping her wings about her, she clutched the thin branch, trembling with cold and fear. Mother, Stella Luna squeaked, where are you? By daybreak, the baby could hold on no longer. Down, down again, she dropped. Flump. Stella Luna landed head first in a soft, downy nest, startling the three baby birds who lived there. Stella Luna quickly clambered from the nest and hung out of sight below it. She listened to the babble of the three birds. What was that? cried Flap. I don't know, but it's hanging by its feet, chirped Flitter. Shh! Here comes Mama, hissed Pip. Many, many times that day, Mother Bird flew away, always returning with food for her babies. Stella Luna was terribly hungry, but not for the crawly things Mama Bird brought. Finally, though, the little bat could bear it no longer. She climbed into the nest, closed her eyes, and opened her mouth. Plop! In dropped a big green grasshopper. Stella Luna learned to be like the birds. She stayed awake all day and slept at night. She ate bugs even though they tasted awful. Her bat ways were quickly disappearing, except for one thing. Stella Luna still liked to sleep hanging by her feet. Once, when Mama was away, the curious baby birds decided to try it too. When Mama Bird came home, she saw eight tiny feet gripping the edge of the nest. Eek! she cried. Get back here this instant. You're going to fall and break your necks. The birds clambered back into the nest, but Mama Bird stopped Stella Luna. You're teaching my children to do bad things. I will not let you back into this nest unless you promise to obey all the rules of this house. Stella Luna promised. She ate bugs without making faces. She slept in the nest at night and she didn't hang by her feet. Stella Luna behaved as a good bird should. All the babies grew quickly and soon the nest became crowded. Mama Bird told them it was time to learn to fly. One by one, Pip, Flitter, Flap, and Stella Luna jumped from the nest. Their wings worked. I'm just like them, thought Stella Luna. I can fly too. Pip, Flitter, and Flap landed gracefully on a branch. Stella Luna tried to do the same. How embarrassing. I will fly all day, Stella Luna told herself. Then no one will see how clumsy I am. The next day, Pip, Flitter, Flap, and Stella Luna went flying far from home. They flew for hours exercising their new wings. The sun is setting, warned Flitter. We had better go home or we'll get lost in the dark, said Flap. But Stella Luna had flown far ahead and was nowhere to be seen. The three anxious birds went home without her. All alone, Stella Luna flew and flew until her wings ached and she dropped into a tree. I promise not to hang by my feet, Stella Luna sighed. So she hung by her thumbs and soon fell asleep. She didn't hear the soft sound of wings coming near. Hey, a loud voice said, why are you hanging upside down? Stella Luna's eyes opened wide. She saw a most peculiar face. I'm not upside down. You are, Stella Luna said. Ah, but you're a bat. Bats hang by their feet. You're hanging by your thumbs, so that makes you upside down. The creature said, I'm a bat. I'm hanging by my feet. That makes me right side up. Stella Luna was confused. Mama Bird told me I was upside down. She said I was wrong. Wrong for a bird, maybe, but not for a bat. More bats gathered around to see the strange young bat who behaved like a bird. Stella Luna told them her story. You ate b bugs, stuttered one. You slept at 
Night, gasped another. How very strange, they all murmured. Wait, wait, let me look at this child. A bat pushed through the crowd. An owl attacked you, she asked. Sniffing Stella Luna's fur, she whispered, You're Stella Luna. You're my baby. You escaped the owl, cried Stella Luna. You survived? Yes, said Mother Bat as she wrapped her wings around Stella Luna. Come with me and I'll show you where to find the most delicious fruit. You'll never have to eat another bug as long as you live. But it's nighttime, Stella Luna squeaked. We can't fly in the dark or we'll crash into trees. We're bats, said Mother Bat. We can see in the darkness. Come with us. Stella Luna was afraid, but she let go of the tree and dropped into the deep blue sky. Stella Luna could see. She felt as though rays of light shone from her eyes. She was able to see everything in her path. Soon, the bats found a mango tree, and Stella Luna ate as much of the fruit as she could hold. I'll never eat another bug as long as I live, cheered Stella Luna as she stuffed herself full. I must tell Pip flitter and flap. The next day, Stella Luna went to visit the birds. Come with me and meet my bat family, said Stella Luna. Okay, let's go, agreed Pip. They hung by their feet and they fly at night and they eat the best food in the world, Stella Luna explained to the birds on the way. As the birds flew among the bats, Flap said, I feel upside down here. Soon, the birds hung by their feet. Wait until dark, Stella Luna said excitedly. We will fly at night. When night came, Stella Luna flew away. Pip, Flitter, and Flap leaped from the tree to follow her. I can't see a thing, yelled Pip. Neither can I, howled Flitter. Ah! Screeched Flap. They're going to crash, gasped Stella Luna. I must rescue them. Stella Luna swooped about, grabbing her friends in the air. She lifted them to a tree, and the birds grasped a branch. Stella Luna hung from the limb above them. We're safe, said Stella Luna. Then she sighed. I wish you could see in the dark, too. We wish you could land on your feet, Flitter replied. Pip and Flap nodded. They perched in silence for a long time. How can we be so different? and feel so much alike, mused Flitter. How can we feel so different and be so much alike, wondered Pip. I think it, this is quite a mystery, Flap chirped. I agree, said Stella Luna, but we're friends, and that's a fact. And that is the end of that story. Peace at Last by Jill Murphy. The hour was late. Mr. Bear was tired, Mrs. Bear was tired, and Baby Bear was tired. So they all went to bed. Mrs. Bear fell asleep. Mr. Bear didn't. Mrs. Bear began to snore, <coughs> went Mrs. Bear. <coughs> oh no, said Mr. Bear, I can't stand this. So he got up and went to sleep in Baby Bear's room. Baby Bear was not asleep either. He was lying in bed, pretending to be an airplane. Rear, went Baby Bear. Rear. Oh no, said Mr. Bear. I can't stand this. So he got up and went to sleep in the living room. Tick tock went the living room clock. Tick tock, tick tock. Cuckoo, cuckoo. Oh no said Mr. Bear. I can't stand this. So he went off to sleep in the kitchen. Drip, drip, went the leaky faucet. Hmm, went the refrigerator. 
Oh, no, said Mr. Bear. I can't stand this. So he got up and went to sleep in the garden. Well, you would not believe what noises there are in the garden at night. Woo, 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 went the owl. Scuffle, scuffle, went the hedgehog. Meow, sang the cats on the wall. Oh no, said Mr. Bear, I can't stand this. So he went off to sleep in the car. It was cold in the car and uncomfortable, but Mr. Bear was so tired, he didn't notice. He was just falling asleep when all the birds started to sing and the sun peeped in at the window. Tweet, 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 went the birds. Shine, shine, went the sun. Oh no, said Mr. Bear, I can't stand this. So he got up and went back into the house. In the house, Baby Bear was fast asleep, and Mrs. Bear had turned over and wasn't snoring anymore. Mr. Bear got into bed and closed his eyes. Ah, peace at last, he said to himself. Bring went the alarm clock. Bring Mrs. Bear sat up and wiped her eyes. Good morning, dear, she said. Did you sleep well? Not very well, dear, said Mr. Bear. Never mind, said Mrs. Bear. I'll bring you the mail and a nice cup of tea. And she did. And that's peace at last. What Shall We Do With the Boohoo Baby? by Cressida Cowell, illustrated by Ingrid Gordon. What shall we do with the boohoo baby? Feed him, said the dog. So they fed the baby. Boo, said the cow. Quack, quack, said the duck. Meow, said the cat. Bow, wow, said the dog. And said the baby. What shall we do with the boohoo baby? Bathe them, said the cat. So they gave the baby a bath. Meow, said the cat. Bow wow, said the dog. Quack, said the duck. Moo, said the cow. And boohoo, said the baby. What shall we do with the boohoo baby? Play with him, said the cow. So they played with the baby. Quack, quack, said the duck. Bow, wow, said the dog. Moo, said the cow. Meow, said the cat. And boo-hoo, said the baby. What shall we do with the boo-hoo baby? Put him to bed, said the duck. So they put him to bed. Moo, said the cow. Bow, wow, said the dog. Meow, said the cat. Quack, said the duck, and <laughs> said the baby. Good night, baby. And this is The Flea Sneeze by Lynn Downey. On a dark, dark night on an old, old farm, in a rickety, crickety, tumble-down barn, everyone slept peacefully. A rat, a cat, a black-eyed bat, a cow, an owl, a feathered fowl, a dog, a hog, an old barn frog. Everyone slept peacefully. 
but not the flea. No one heard him cough. <coughs> not even the mouse he used for a house, or the rat, or the cat, or the black-eyed bat, or the cow, or the owl, or the feathered fowl, or the dog, or the hog, or the old barn frog. They all slept peacefully, but not the flea. No one heard him sniffle. <laughs> Not even the mouse he used for a house, or the rat, or the cat, or the black-eyed bat, or the cow, or the owl, or the feathered fowl, or the dog, or the hog, or the old barn frog. They all slept peacefully, but not the flea. No one heard his garbled plea. Does anybody have a tissue for B? Not even the mouse he used for a house, or the rat, or the cat, or the black-eyed bat, or the cow, or the owl, or the feathered fowl, or the dog, or the hog, or the old barn frog. They all slept peacefully but not the flea. Then suddenly, before he could cover his snoot, ha, ha, choo! It scared the rat who cried boo-hoo. It woke the cat who hissed maroo. It baffled the bat whose eyes turned blue and confused the cow who muttered moo, moo. It outraged the owl who hollered hoo, hoo. It flustered the fowl who crowed cock-a-doodle-doo. It daunted the dog who barked woo, woo. It sprayed the hog who screamed you. It reminded the frog of his old nephew. But the mouse the flea used for a house kindly gave him a tissue. The flea wiped his nose, and before his eyes had even closed, he began to doze. And for all the rest of that dark, dark night on the old, old farm, in the rickety, crickety, tumble-down barn, everyone slept peacefully. The flea and the mouse he used for a house, the rat, the cat, the black-eyed bat, the cow, the owl, the feathered fowl, even the dog and the old barn frog. Everyone slept just like a log, except the hog. No one heard his garbled wheeze. I think I've got a sneeze. And that's the end of it. Welcome to Channel 17, the Town of Colony Government Channel.